All right, we're going to talk about something completely different now, um, get into some uh, discussion of summertime activities. Um, first, I want to acknowledge uh, the laundry list of uh, started cost recommendations the state legislature and a lot of the in the past. The university are, uh, operate with our scientists that we work for, work with um, what the task was to uh, ever looking at this. Uh, all cloud seeding or weather modification problems is the problem of transport and dispersion of seeding material, uh, particularly from ground-based generators. And this was a case study aimed at uh, looking at that problem. Uh, the collaborators at uh, DRI in the modeling group, Darko Corison and Domagoy Podnor and Ming Zhao looked at a lot of the uh, MM5 output and, and uh, tried to put it in a sensible uh, way of describing it here. This is research related to wintertime snowfall augmentation, part of the USBR weather damage, I said mitigation, the actual name is modification, but mitigation seems more appropriate. Uh, the Nevada program, uh, one of the tasks was the steady airflow and cloud development over complex terrain. Focus on areas of our project where there's been little background research and collect some supporting observational data that would verify the modeling steps. In this particular case, uh, we were evaluating plume dispersion from ground generators under a variety of storm conditions and uh, coordinating that uh, this type of case study analysis with uh, the Nevada Operational Seeding Program and using some of the results to see if uh, we position generators in the correct places or if we need to reposition generators or just how bad our targeting might be. Uh, the modeling procedures, we used the uh, MM5 model to develop the three-dimensional cloud and wind fields. We initialized it with NCEP data. 15 minute output of this data, uh, particle dispersion model. The dispersion model is called a Lagrangian particle dispersion model or LAP. Uh, much of it was developed at DRI. Points, we can uh, simulate line release points from a source. And our dispersion model can actually, so you can actually trace in the uh, how. Uh, play in two or three dimensions. This is our uh, MM5 domain and uh, the inner domain I show here focused on Tahoe. The, the region we actually modeled was a little bit, for this case study, was a little bit to the southeast over the Walker and uh, Carson River Basin. This is the inner domain and the topography. The main Sierra crest line is running along here. This is the inner part of the, the Walker Basin. This is one of our aircraft seating flight tracks down here. The X's are uh, snow tail sites within the basin. The triangles are snow sampling sites where we actually took snow samples and ran them through our trace chemistry lab at DRI to see if seating material was getting impact or uh, into the snowpack over the basin. We had a microwave radiometer here at the triangle that's slightly downwind of the Sierra Nevada crest. And then we developed uh, some cross sections from the MM5 along this particular line, which is basically parallel to the upper level wind flow. We did some verification of the model output. Here I compare uh, integrated water vapor from the model, which is the in part to target some of these interior mountain range. In some wind directions, we target the main Sierra crest, but we have never had a good handle on what's really happening to these plumes on the downwind side of the Sierra. And if I showed a number of these cross sections, what you'd see was the positions of these waves tend to change quite dramatically over, even over the course of a few hours and the dimensions of the waves also tend to change dramatically 
So all of this is, uh, as you will see in a couple of the plume animations that I'm about to show, uh, really affect dramatically the dispersion and transport of plumes on the downwind side. This is just another one, and you can see going back this by the vertical. A couple of the times in the storm, this was uh, actually doing seeding operations, uh, amounts of liquid developing over these uh, downwind ranges. And that is winds change. So this is cloud weather development. Uh, it, a couple of the times in the storm, this was uh, fairly early in the storm. And you can see the obvious liquid water max on the upwind side and some minor uh, amounts of liquid developing over these uh, downwind ranges. This was a period when we were actually doing seeding operations. And the cloud seeding aircraft was about right here. And they can definitely verify that they were in liquid water because not long after this, he went this direction and lower to de-ice. And this is where the radiometer was located, um, uh, vertically pointing, sampling liquid water. And this diagram would indicate that a lot of the liquid we would be seeing on the radiometer might be in the liquid that's developing in these uh, waves downwind of the main crest line. This is a horizontal view of the plume dispersion from the lap model from four different generator locations. And this is over a 48-hour period that began at 0Z on the 2nd of February. And you can see the obvious even 15-minute to 15-minute changes. But in this particular case, I want to point out that some of this higher terrain on the interior uh, are some of the regions that we're trying to target with these particular generator placements. 